you see my friend, to get big you need to hit the muscle from every different angle, with high reps and short rest periods. Because who the hell cares about strength, right? We're training for size. Oh my god, that is such bullshit. Muscle growth is not just about how heavy you train, how many reps you do, or how much time you spend in the gym. Intensity, volume, and frequency are equally important, and together create the stimulus that leads to growth. Focusing on only one of them means missing the forest for the trees. Where's the forest? I only see the trees. Online, you'll find an endless debate. On one side, you have the people that say strength doesn't matter for size and you should just pump your muscles in the 10 to 12 rep range. And on the other side, you have those that say volume isn't that important and strength gains are essential for muscle growth. Who's right? Well, everyone's right. A few years ago, Dr. Brad Schoenfeld published a paper on the causes of muscle growth. And he arrived at the conclusion that there are three main factors that lead to muscle growth. Number one, progressive tension overload, meaning lifting heavier and heavier weights over time. Number two, muscle damage, meaning how much you break the muscle fibers in training. And number three, metabolic fatigue, the burn you feel when doing high reps. So both pumping your muscles and lifting heavy lead to growth, but not equally. It turns out progressive overload is by far the most important. If a person doesn't get stronger over time, no matter how much volume they do, they won't get bigger. And I'm sure you've noticed that yourself. If you're as strong as you were last year, you're probably the same size too. And you never see someone lifting heavy weights for reps without having good muscle development. Now, something to note here is that Strength and size are related only when strength is gained in a medium rep range. Powerlifters and Olympic weightlifters train their nervous system to produce high amounts of force for one rep. They also use the form that gives them the best mechanical advantage. So, when doing only 1-3 reps per set, strength and size are not tightly related. Damn, a 14 year old girl Bench is 315. What the hell am I doing here? Alright, so far we've concluded that lifting heavier and heavier weights over time is the main stimulus for muscle growth. This means that the main goal of your training program is to get you stronger in a medium rep range. Let's see how you do that. The first thing you need to understand is that there is a hierarchy of importance when it comes to setting training variables. At the bottom of the pyramid, are the most important aspects and as you get closer to the top each level becomes less and less important for your overall results and as you can see rest periods and tempo are actually the least important things you can focus on and yet guys in the gym talk about this most often we're not going to do that what we'll focus on is on setting the right volume intensity and frequency because if those are set correctly strength progression happens automatically Let's start with volume. A few months ago, Greg and I interviewed Eric Helms, and I had a question I wanted to ask him for a long time. A lot of guys, uh, some really knowledgeable guys, uh, talk about how volume is the main driver of muscle growth. And uh, I wanted to ask you, do you believe that volume in and of itself is what leads to growth, or it's more like uh, volume is what drives the strength gains that lead to growth? That's a great question, and I think, I think yes, is the answer. Um, just pure volume to a certain degree does create growth because we're talking about kind of that fuel cell and, and the fuel for it. But at a certain point, like if, if your muscles adapt to doing a high level of, of uh, muscular work, then, then that, that, that fuel cell is big enough. But yeah, no, you're very right that you may need to do more volume to get progressive overload to get the fiber to grow, which is, which is hypertrophy, right? Um, a good way to look at it is that you need volume of heavy enough work to, to create an adaptive stimulus and the volume you need is going to be 
more than you previously needed to grow before you plateaued. So while volume is what creates the stimulus, you should be doing as little work as you can while still making progress optimally. Because if there comes a point where you plateau, you can increase volume a little, which will drive further adaptation. A good starting point is this. Most intermediates need between 40 and 100 effective reps per body part per week in order to make optimal progress. From that point, over the course of their training career, they'll probably have to gradually increase the amount of work they do in order to keep progressing. So with that in mind, let's ask the next question. How heavy should you train? If you've noticed, previously I said between 40 and 100 effective reps per week, not any kind of reps. There is a certain threshold of effort that you need to pass in order for a rep to stimulate adaptation. And as you can see in this picture, you can get those effective reps in any rep range. However, the easiest way to accumulate heavy enough reps is in the medium rep range of 5 to 10 reps per set. This is why training in this rep range is the best choice for muscle growth. Think about it. If you did 100 reps in sets of 3, yeah, you could get enough heavy volume in to drive hypertrophy, but the stress on your body would be enormous. If the results you get are equal to training in a medium rep range, why would you do it? Why would you train harder to get the same results? On the other hand, if you did sets of 15 or more with light weights, only the last 8 reps or so would count as effective reps. You'd have to do a lot of unnecessary extra volume at the beginning of the set because those first few reps are like a warm-up. This is one of the reasons why doing straight sets like 5x5 or doing reverse pyramid training is superior to doing ascending pyramid sets because you get more effective reps with training 5x5 or reverse pyramid training than you do with ascending pyramid sets. I think Greg Knuckles explained it best. He said, in the medium rep range, the weights are generally light enough that you can maintain good technique, not cheat the range of motion, get pretty close to failure safely, not burn out your CNS after just a couple of sets, and not be left with creaky joints. On the other hand, the weights are generally heavy enough that you're still putting a fair amount of tension on the muscle, you're more likely to be limited in each set by muscular fatigue than systemic anaerobic fatigue, and you're not doing so many reps that you're metabolically crushed after just your first couple of sets. Simply stated, all reps are heavy enough to count and it's the easiest way to accumulate efficient volume. That efficient volume is what stimulates strength gains, which lead to muscle growth. Now let's talk about training frequency. You can think about frequency as the way you organize your volume instead of a distinct training variable. If the number of heavy reps per week is equal, different training frequencies will produce more or less the same results. This is why you can have equally effective training programs even though one has you train a body part once a week and another two times a week. Now with that said, I feel that most intermediates would do better training a muscle group once every 4-5 to five days instead of just once a week. The main reason for that is because as an intermediate, you can make progress in strength almost every time you hit the gym. This means you'd progress faster if you have 6 workouts in a month compared to 4 workouts in a month. So, in short, this is the way you set an effective training routine. You need a good combination of volume, intensity and frequency and progression will happen almost automatically. To give you an example, my training over the last 5 months looked something like this. This is one of the routines from Greg's Grigad program that I've been following for almost 2 years now. And a point I want to make here is that you should not confuse a training program with a training split or training routine. A training program also covers progression, progressing the weights on the bar and progressing through different routines as you advance. What most people call training programs are actually training splits. They tell you what exercises to do on what days, and that's it. But that is not enough to make optimal progress. Progression, progressing the weights, is something that must be designed. Now, I think this video is long enough as it is, so we're gonna stop here. We'll cover the other topics in future videos, so make sure that you're subscribed.
this time. This album was the chronic. They wanna know if he still got it. They say raps change. They wanna know how I feel about if it. You ain't up on pain. Dr. Dre is the name. I'm ahead of my game. Still puffin' my leaf. Still fuck with the beats. Still not loving police. Still rock my.